So today we're going to discuss how to size a junction box for an angle pull. The last video we did the straight pull. Straight pull, remember, is multiplied by 8. We are going to now discuss Article 314.28A2, which is going to give us angles and U-pulls. Okay. How do we size a, a junction box? Very simple. You have to remember two rules. If it's a straight through pull, you're going to multiply the largest conduit by 8. In an angle pull, you're still going to multiply the largest conduit, but instead of multiplying it by 8, you're going to multiply it by 6. Okay? So we will multiply a pull box or an angle pull box that will be sized 6 times the largest uh, conduit. Okay? Sizing the junction box to the conduit. How we size a conduit to the wires will be done, will be done in a later video. So please keep a lookout for that one. Let's get back to this. <clears throat> Here I have an angle pull. I have two four inch conduits going into a junction box, but what size junction box do I put in? See, when you guys get out in the field, you're going to get to the situation where you're going to have to size junction boxes. You can't just put any box in. If you put it too small of a box, you're not going to have the right um, size junction box, and trust me, the inspector will pick up on it. Okay. At the same time, we don't want to run a one inch conduit and put uh, an 18 by 18 junction box in because now we're just wasting money. Okay. There's a few hundred dollar mistake there. This is why it's very important to understand that when you're doing an angle pull or replacing a 90, because remember, when you're running conduit, 360 degrees is the maximum run of a conduit with, with bends. Okay. If we put junction boxes in, it's almost like a start over point. So we put the junction box over. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll put a junction box in for a 90 or an angle pull. And this way here, we can pull from different locations. Okay. Trust me, as you guys start to get this experience out in the field, you'll see that this is actually going to help you in the long run. So what we have to do is we have to look and say, I'm running a four inch conduit. I'm going to replace one of my 90s. I'm going to put a pull box in because I have to go 150 feet one way, 200 feet another way, and all those bends, eh, that's going to be hard to pull. So let me put a pull box in and we'll go from there. Okay? So do it. My four inch conduit has to be sized, so I have to do four because that's the size of my conduit, times six because that's my, my multiplier according to. Article 314.28A2, that's going to give me 24 inches. So this junction box has to be 24 inches. Now, if we're only putting one conduit in, it's very simple to complete this. Because if I know I have 24 inches here, that means I have to have 24 inches here. So if I'm running a 4-inch conduit, I have to make sure that if it's only 4 inch conduit, I have to make sure that I put a 24 by 24 junction box in, period. Okay. What if I have multiple conduits? Let's say I have two conduits going into a junction box. I have a 3 inch conduit and I have a 2 inch conduit. Again, something that we do very commonly. Okay. Remember the rule. Our 316.28 a2 is going to tell us that we have to multiply the largest conduit by 6. It also is going to tell us that we have to take the remainder, whatever pipes we have, whatever conduits we have also going to that, we have to add it to it. So remember, take the largest conduit, multiply it by 6, add the other conduit, and that's the size of your junction box. So let's do the math. If I have a 3 inch conduit, I have to take the 3 inch and I have to multiply it by 6. That's going to give me 18. I also have a 2 inch conduit. I have to add the 2 inch to it and that gives me a 20 inch box. 
which means I have to have a minimum of a 20 by 20. Now, could I put in a 24 by 24? Yes. Could I put in an 18 by 18? No. Remember, you have to take the largest conduit and multiply it by the multiplier of 6. You have to add the additional conduits to it. Let's do one more example. Let's do it, this example. This example is we have three conduits. So three conduits, we do the same thing. I have a four inch conduit. That is my largest conduit on both sides, but we're gonna do one side right now. So I'm gonna take the four and I'm gonna multiply that by six. That's gonna give me 24 inches. I have two two inch conduits. I'm gonna add them together, which will give me four inches. I'm gonna add the four to this and it's gonna give me a 28 inch box. Obviously guys, we have the same conduit going in one way as we do have it coming out the other way, so we have nothing to worry about, okay? If we did have more conduits, we have to size them a little bit different, okay? So remember, every scenario is gonna be a little bit different. You just have to remember that the conduit is you take the largest conduit, multiply it by six, add the additional conduits to that number, and that gives you the size of your box. Depth of the box, again, is going to be sized according to your lock nuts and connectors. Okay. I hope this give you, has given you a good understanding on how to size an angle box, or an angle pull box, excuse me. So, plenty of videos coming out. So do me a favor, like it, subscribe, make sure you subscribe, and remember, if you subscribe, you can stay up to date with Craig Michaud, electrical instructor, and stay on top of the next, the latest and greatest. Thanks.